The southern marine otter is found from Peru along the entire Chilean coast to the extreme south of Argentina and Patagonia. It lives on rocky intertidal areas with abundant seaweed and kelp. This otter is strictly marine and even shuns estuaries. Like most members of the weasel family, these otters are hyperactive creatures. Their population is between 800 and 2,000 individuals. While its range appears extensive, it is limited by appropriate habitat. This wonderful marine mammal is considered endangered, and it's the world's smallest marine mammal. Sea otters have the densest fur of any animal on the planet, so they can keep a body temperature of 38 degrees centigrade even in the cold of the Southern Ocean. A square inch of fur has 800,000 hairs. That's more than your entire dog has, unless it's a husky. To maintain this active lifestyle, Marine otters need to eat 25% of their body weight every day. That sounds like fun, but expensive. Marine otters have a wide diet. Studies suggest that in their northern range, they prefer to eat crustaceans and mollusks, while in the south, they feed mostly on fish. Mussels are diverse and abundant along most of the Chilean coast. Mussels are also a local specialty for people. The northern sea otter, while not directly related, is famous for using a rock on its belly to smash open shellfish. Otters really do love their shellfish. The fact is that an otter will probably eat any crustacean or mollusk. Abalone is common in the pristine waters of Patagonia and it is appreciated by people and otters alike. It may be a lot of work to remove the spines, but sea urchins are a favorite of otters. When they want something that takes less preparation, octopus, squid, and cuttlefish are on the menu. Sometimes marine otters grab a bird, and there are records of them eating flightless steamer ducks. Losing the ability to fly has its downside. Most foraging is in waters less than 25 meters deep. Curiously, female southern marine otters pass on their food preferences to their young. This otter measures a little over a meter and doesn't weigh more than five kilos. Like other otters, it has webbed feet. Caves and crevices along the rocky shores make for good dens, and sometimes a den will have an underwater entrance. Marine otters are monogamous or polygamous and breed between December and January. Two to five pups are born in January to March. The pups hang with mom for about 10 weeks and undergo intense training. And that's a say whale not too far offshore. Life isn't only about eating and playing around, they have challenges too, such as not getting killed. Although there are no records, it is assumed that orcas hunt otters. That goes the same for the great white shark that patrol the same waters. It's a good thing that the marine otters forage in more shallow waters, well, most of the time. A more likely problem would be an attack from an alpha male sea lion. But the real threat to this animal's existence comes from us. 
Historically, marine otters were killed for their pelts, and this continued, especially in Peru, until the 1970s, but it is not a major cause for their population decline. In Chile, the southern marine otter has been protected by law since 1972. However, some fishermen still think they eat too many fish and abalone and kill them illegally. And others die unintentionally in fishing nets. Here, abalone fishermen, using the latest technology, harvest many times more the number of abalone than an otter can. An otter needs one kilo of food per day between all the types of food it eats. A good abalone diver can harvest 20 kilos in an hour. People need to follow the rules, as they're doing here. Abalone is delicious, and it's a traditional Chilean food. Some of the harvest is exported, but there's no reason why we can't have our abalone steaks and leave enough for this threatened species. Another shared delicacy is the sea urchin. Otters love them, and so do the Japanese. Chile exports about $3 million worth of preserved sea urchins every year. While people continue to overfish the ocean, it's ridiculous to think that a few hundred small otters would affect anyone's bottom line. One major threat to this species is coastal development. But sometimes the threats affect the entire coastal ecosystems and communities. The threat of oil spills is real and increasing. Chile has many industries, and industrial contamination is a big problem. Pollution controls and enforcement have been lacking. But in recent years, progress has been made. Even one of the most polluted bays in Chile, Quintero, is improving. This family of otters in the bay seems to be doing well, and even the fishermen like to have them around. 